Hello everyone, it's Red Saber here from Saber C++, and today we're going to be learning about the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. If you want to follow along, I've put a few links in the description so you can get what you need. This is the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. As you can see, it has just three pins, and for some reason, none of them are really labeled. If we're looking at it from the top, with the blue thing farther from us, the data pin is the one on the left, the VCC pin is in the middle, and the ground pin is the one on the right. First, I'll connect a black wire from the ground pin on the right to one of the ground ports on the Arduino. Next, I'll connect this red wire from the middle pin on the sensor, which is the VCC pin, to the 5 volt port on the Arduino. And lastly, I'll connect this green wire here from the remaining pin on the sensor to one of the digital ports on the Arduino. In this case, I'll use port 2. That's all we have to do to wire it up. Coding for the temperature and humidity sensor is pretty simple, but we'll need a couple of libraries in order to use it. First, we'll need the DHT sensor library, which you can get by going to the first link in the description and downloading the latest version. We'll also need the Adafruit Unified Sensor Driver, which you can get by going to the second link in the description, hitting this code button here, and selecting Download Zip. In the Arduino IDE, we'll go to Sketch, Include Library, and Add .zip Library. Then we can browse to the location of our libraries and select them. First, I'll add the Adafruit Sensor Library. And if it asks if you want to overwrite the existing library, go ahead and click Yes, as this is the latest version. I'll do the same thing, going to Sketch, Include Library, Add.zip Library, and add the DHT Sensor Library we just downloaded as well. Now that we've added both libraries, we'll need to include the DHT library like this. At the top, we can type hash include and then dht.h. This includes the DHT library. We don't need to include the Adafruit sensor library because it just runs in the background and makes sure that the DHT library will work properly. Let's start by defining a couple of values. The first is the pin we connected the sensor's data pin to. In this case, 2. To define a value, we can use hash define, then the name, in this case DHT pin, and then the value, in this case 2. These values are called constants, which means that they aren't allowed to change in the program. Next, we'll define the DHT type as DHT11. Now this DHT11 value is actually defined up above in the DHT library, so we can use it down here. We could also set this to DHT22 if we're using the DHT22 sensor. Next, we'll need to create an object that will be a digital representation of our temperature sensor in our code like this. First, we'll use the type, which in this case is DHT, then the name, which in this case is temp sensor, and then we'll set it equal to a new object of type DHT, which we'll create using the DHT pin and the DHT type that we just declared. In the setup function, we'll set up serial communication using serial.begin 9600. We'll also need to tell the temperature sensor to begin using temp sensor.begin. In the loop function, we can read values from our temperature and humidity sensor and print them out using the serial monitor. First, let's create a float called humidity and set it to temp sensor.readhumidity. Next, let's create a float called Celsius and set this to temp sensor dot read temperature. By default, the read temperature method gives us the temperature in Celsius. However, if we pass in a Boolean variable set to true, then it'll give us the value in Fahrenheit. So let's go ahead and create a variable called Fahrenheit and set it to temp sensor dot read temperature true. Now that we have all of these values, let's print them out. First, I'll write serial.print Then, we can type serial.print and this time temperature. I'll go ahead and put a space in front of the temperature so that the humidity number doesn't run into the word temperature. After temperature, we can print out the Celsius value. Then, we'll print out the letter C. Then a space so that the C doesn't run into the Fahrenheit value and we'll print out Fahrenheit value, and then an F for Fahrenheit. Note that this last 
print statement should actually be a print line statement so that we'll go ahead onto a new line the next time the loop function runs. The last thing to do is add a delay. I'll add a delay for one second, or a thousand milliseconds, which will make it easier to read the values in the serial monitor. As you can see, we're now printing out the temperature and humidity values in the serial monitor. If you want to learn more about Arduino and the sensors and modules you can use with it, check out my channel, Saber C++. Thanks for watching.